Okay, so let's go over the issue of moisture. So excess moisture occurs when you have high humidity in your home and um, a lack of ventilation. So everything that we do in our home pretty much creates um, moisture, creates humidity, adds water to the air. So things like, you know, taking a shower, um, plants release moisture into the air, um, just breathing releases moisture, perspiration. Um, there's a lot of things that, that release moisture. And if you don't ventilate this like humid air out of your home, uh, you're gonna have moisture issues. Um, so with the sealed home, you have a you know a sealed air barrier again with this red line. Um, your, the moisture really has nowhere to get out unless you mechanically get it out or open windows, get that out of your home. Um, so this is gonna cause issues um, down the road if you, it, uh, you know, long term have a lot of uh, moisture in the air and you don't get it out. So what exactly adds adds moisture into the air? So 70% um, is the relative humidity where mold growth starts to become a problem. Now relative humidity, like what that term means, is it's relative to the temperature of your home. So let's go over exactly what adds water into the air. Here's just some simple numbers. I think there's a lot of things that add water to the air here, just some things um, that all of us do. So for a family of four, um, you can add a half a pint of water by simply taking a five minute shower, which to be honest, I don't know who takes sh like showers that are so short, um, but that's half a pint just for five minutes. Um, you add one pint for every five to seven plants you have, and that's a per day number. 0.7 pints just to wash dishes, four to six pints um, if you're drying your clothes indoor, um, and that's per load. So if, like in the winter time you have clothes that you like to air dry, you're doing that inside, um, you're gonna be adding a significant amount of water into your air. Um, one and a half pints by just simply cooking, um, and uh, 0.4 pints just from breathing, and that's a per hour number. So if you have a lot of people living in like a small apartment or something, that can get, you know, you can really get that relative humidity uh, percentile really, really high. Okay, so let's go over like a quick case study. Um, so again, 70%, that's the number that we start seeing issues, okay? So if you have an 800 square foot home, family of four, the temperature being 65 degrees Fahrenheit, and a starting relative humidity at 50%, right? So this 50% number comes from the temperature here um, and the amount of water in the air. So starting water content of three pints, okay? So this number here, Fahrenheit plus the um, the water content is going to give you this the 50 percentile number. So how much water do you need to add to the air to reach the 70 percent number? And it's not a lot. It's 1.4 pints will give you 70 percent of a relative humidity. So let's go back to our other uh, slide 1.4. So what do you need to do to reach that number? I mean honestly nothing almost. You If you just cook, you know, cook a meal for a family of four, you've already added that to the to the air. Um, and there you go, now you've reached 70%. So as you can tell, it's really, really easy to reach that number. Um, it's, you know, and it's especially if you have a sealed home and there's no air exchange, you can get there really, really fast. So why this is an issue is when you have excess levels of humidity, you can start getting mold growth and that will affect um, the health of your family because mold growth can, can release spores into, into the air. Um, you can have an issue with um, dust mite infestation like in your carpets. You might start growing mold in your carpet. Um, things aren't going to dry out. It can cause a really big issue. Um, you know, there are people here in San Diego where I've heard they've had to vacate the, their home because their children are getting sick and have asthma issues or asthma attacks or just a uh, lower quality of health due to the fact that um, you know they have mold issues because of high humidity levels um, like I said I live in San Diego so we just we, we generally have high humidity in our our air um, so keeping it down inside of our home is actually pretty difficult um, but we live in San Diego so we always have our windows open it's good ventilation we get this humid air out um, it's not generally an issue but with older homes uh, it can definitely be a problem so what can you do? Um, you can monitor. There's no way of knowing what humidity levels are until you monitor it. Um, so you can get a hydrometer. I have a link here. Um, you can click this link um, in the slideshow that I've uploaded at the end of this, um, this section. That's there and also the description section of that slideshow also has this link um, and it's an affiliate link to Amazon. So go check it out. There's also other stuff on there too. Um, they're all generally the same. 
they give you temperature, they give you relative humidity. Um, some of them give you, if it's a low to high reading, um, things like that. And like I said earlier, the solution to this is just to simply ventilate. Um, if you're gonna do a completely airtight home, you're gonna wanna get some mechanical ventilation going. Um, and some of these mechanical ventilation um, units are able to uh, keep the, the water out of your air so it can dehumidify your air um, and reuse that somehow. A lot of these units are like really energy efficient. Um, but yeah, you can dehumidify that air. Some of them uh, will dehumidify the air coming into your home. Some of them will just dehumidify its air um, the air within your home. So there's all sorts of things you can purchase out there, a lot of products. Um, so if this is an issue that you found in your home, uh, go check go check those things out. So that kind of concludes moisture issues. Let's uh, move on to the next section.